Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my second little upload of the day. Earlier I posted uh, another episode of Does Anyone Still Care About This? About the whole Will Smith situation. And if you haven't seen that, it's up. In this video, I wanna talk about something that um, is obviously close to my heart. If you saw, you saw the title. And if you're familiar with me at all, you know that since I started making content on YouTube in the spring of 2021, I've been very open about being a woman in her late 30s who was unmarried, who did want children. So I think there's a big line there, like between, you know, people who wanted kids and don't want kids at my age. And it's trying to accept this reality that they've been handed with, they don't have any kids and it wasn't necessarily their choice versus the reality that they were told they were going to be living. I think in general, when I made that video, it was because I didn't see the conversation that I was having and the conversation that I know a lot of people in my situation were having. I didn't see a lot of conversations about people that get to my age and have to begin the mourning process for what they thought their life would look like. And I didn't see it because it wasn't really there. I think social media, for the most part, um, and I noticed this on TikTok, you guys know I was whining, nobody wants to follow my TikTok <laughs> for a while. And then I had one video that went kind of viral, it had over 100,000 views. And um, it went viral in the best way because it made people laugh. Um, and I, I think at this point in the editing process, I put it here on screen, but I was just being silly. And so I was really overjoyed when that video went viral and it got me, you know, a couple uh, hundred followers and pushed me over a thousand, which used to really mean something to me on TikTok. I don't remember why. I think that's because that's when you can like go live, but I would never go live. So it doesn't mean anything, but it was still cool. However, um, what I noticed about TikTok once I, you know, started getting on there and trying to post and so on and so forth is, a lot of the content is from people who are in the age range of 18 to 24. A lot of the dating advice, a lot of the uh, issues with work and trying to find where they're gonna be in life and so on and so forth. And as a result, I find myself not being able to relate to a lot of the things that I see on there. And uh, I even, I, I had started to notice this so much that I looked it up. Like, what are the age ranges for people on TikTok? Where, where, what what's going on and it's true i think something like 40 percent of the users are between the ages 18 and 24. that's why you see so much conversation about millennials versus gen z it's because a lot of people are very young and they're just trying to figure out who they are and what their generation means and so a lot of times the way we do that is by saying well this is what i'm not you know by the same token it's the reason why you see a lot of the takes that you see on parenthood the takes that you see on like i said relationships i remember it used to really aggravate me when i was a teacher because i was like why are people having all of these kind of negative takes about people being in the classroom uh uh because a lot of them are still students and they haven't made that transition to actually working in a school they just know it from one position i ended up writing an article about that for the huffington post but um, yeah, a lot of the content on social media is that 18 to 24 range. And so it's a lot of people talking about what they hope adulthood will look like. Um, and if you happen to be a heterosexual woman on, um, and you happen to be a woman of color, and you happen to be a black woman, and you happen to be raised or have roots in the fundamentalist Christianity that a lot of black American people have roots in, then for you, adulthood is, Boaz, you, you know who that is, motherhood, a two-car garage, and a two-story house. And you're gonna get that as soon as you finish your studies, God is gonna bring that man to you, and everything is gonna work out, and it's all gonna work out by the age of 30. For some reason, even though that has not been the reality since like, the 1980s, is it like marriage, marriage rates have been getting lower and people have been getting married later for a long time. But for some reason, for a portion of the population, that is still what they believe. And that's what all their content sounds like. And so everything is about, you know, preparing for that time in your life. Well, I'm going out and partying now um, because I know I'm gonna have kids one day. I'm going out and doing this now because I know I'm gonna meet my husband and it's gonna, and then around 30, you start seeing people post things about, oh, you know, when you're 30 and still single, da, 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 da. and this is across the in all the demographics that I see on TikTok. So not just black Christian women um, raised in, you know, certain types of households, but I mean, everybody, when they get to 30 on TikTok, they really be talking about some just, I mean, it is just 
woe is me. Um, I can't believe I'm 30 and still single. I can't believe, you know, just man. And then the inspirational stories will start, you know, I didn't meet my husband until later in life. I was 33. Or here's another one I saw somebody was like, um, I didn't meet my husband until I was 36. I had my first baby at 37. And when I tell you that comment section was filled with women in their 30s, um, in their early 30s, in their late 20s, who were like, okay, it can still happen. And I know I would have been one of those women at that time in my life. But after you pass those ages, you've passed the inspirational story age. You've had, you're in this time where nothing is happening, no one is coming, and it's it, it gets kind of scary. I, I didn't see any content. And the reason why I didn't see any content is for the same reason why when Lolo Jones, the American track star, like she's done so many different Olympic sports, she's about to turn 40 years old, or she did, she just turned 40, and she posted on her social media teary videos about realizing that her time was expiring to have a family. And she posted about her egg freezing process. And she posted about how she hopes this gives her some more time to meet Boaz, who if you don't know, if you're not in the Christian church, Boaz is like, is from the story of Ruth and in the Bible, Ruth and Naomi. And he was like this wealthy man. And it, basically he is the archetype that uh, a lot of women are told to look up to when it comes to a husband. Um, don't worry, he's coming. He's gonna be that perfect man, that guy that's gonna join with you and help you build your empire. And um, you know, there's whole Bible studies on this. There's whole like, there, I mean, it's it's a big thing in the Christian church. And so Lolo Jones is interesting though, because she is a, she's a literal 40 year old virgin. She, you know, made the decision to wait until marriage. And she's living a reality that a lot of people don't talk about for a specific reason, and I'm gonna get to it. But she's living the reality that, hey, I didn't meet this person. Now I'm 40 years old, I'm still a virgin and my time is running out to become a mom and I'm scared and it's sad and I don't know what to do. So I'm gonna do this thing because she's got the money because freezing eggs is not cheap and I, I hope it gives me the time. The reason why people don't do that though, the reason why people aren't honest with that story, the reason why a lot of women, even at 38 years old, 39, 40, 41, 42, will still be posting on social media as if they are a 25 year old girl, will still be, or just won't talk won't talk about their single issues, won't talk about how, sometimes how it's really sad to come to the decision or come to the realization that, whoa, like this may not happen for me. Ouch, I was not ready for this. The reason why is because the second you do, the misogynists, like roaches when you turn on the light, start scurrying everywhere. They start, they, they're going every which way and they're on their way to find your content and to rip you apart. The reason why I say that is because um, I had thought just randomly about Lolo uh, the other day because I often, as somebody who's in this position, late 30s, no husband, I talked before about being a single mom by choice, but I have been grappling with that decision and now I'm leading more towards no just because of money issues and other things happening in my personal life. I just really don't know if I would bring a child into that. Um, and also I, I had some wonderful, helpful uh, subscribers who sent me information about their own single mom by choice journeys or their own like fertility journeys. And for women over the age of 35, for the process that I would do, which is uh, IUI, um, because it's cheaper, the success rate is only 10%. And for IVF, the success rate is, is more, but IVF is so expensive and you really do uh, wanna have great insurance or you wanna have a great partner if you're gonna go through IVF, at least I would, you wanna have a lot of money. And so just looking at those uh, statistics, I'm like, all right, okay. you know. So I'm kind of back where I started where I'm just like, ooh, I think I need to go ahead and say goodbye to this. But anyway, so I'm in that position and so occasionally I'll think about women that I know are older than me that are in the media that voice they wanted to have a family but they didn't get married so they never had to get like, and I'll think about them like occasionally. I'll be like, mm, I wonder how so-and-so is doing, especially Lolo because she always made such a big deal about being a virgin until she got married. And she just crossed my mind one day and then I just kind of let it go. And a patron sent me a YouTube video of somebody talking about her posts on, on Instagram where she was saying, I'm very sad and you know I, I don't know what to do and I'm running out of time to be a mom and this is not where I thought I would be. And the YouTube video was filled with some of the most misogynistic and hateful comments regarding her situation that I've ever seen in my life. And I said, this is why women don't talk about this. 
this is why women, especially women who are coming from a situation where they would, they were told they were going to meet this guy. It was going to all work out. This is why they don't talk about this because the misogynists come running. I saw everything in this comment section and I'm not going to link the video here. You can look up Lolo Jones on YouTube and you can find it. I'm not going to link the video because I, I just think it's, I think it's incredibly sad the take that a lot of people had in our situation. But uh, yeah, let's let's talk about the comments. So I saw everything on the comment section from, this is exactly the, the issue that modern women were uh, told would happen to them, uh, thanks to our dearly departed Kevin Samuels. I, I saw that. I saw, well, you know, they tell women not to settle and then you get to 40 and can't have no babies and look at you, just ridiculous. I saw people saying things like, huh, that's the bad side of pretty privilege. You have so many options that you don't settle. And now the man you wanted is out with a family and you have nothing. I saw a lot of things about the wall. Men love to get online and talk about the wall that women hit. I'm not even going to go into it, but metaphorically, you can deduce what it means. Just that part of life where they're no longer desirous and nobody wants them as if every woman is on the same path and the same things happen to all of us at the same time. Stupid. But a lot of misogyny was in those comments from both men and women. And what got me was that it was misogyny in spite of the very real statistics that are facing childbearing people all over the world that would like to have children. The issue is life has changed. We've been hit by a number of worldwide traumatic events. People's attitudes towards marriage and relationships have changed. And a lot of times those changes have not become more conservative, but they become more liberal. And so if you have a person like a Lolo Jones who was raised in an extremely conservative environment and you bring her out into the world, into this modern world where people always want to insult modern women, but they leave everybody else out of it. They don't talk about modern men. They don't talk about, anyway, I can't. But if you bring someone extremely conservative like Lolo Jones into this world and people are changing how they look at marriage and changing how they look at partnership, and perhaps she did meet people who were like, hey, I'll hang out with you. We can have sex. We can do whatever. And, you know, if you have a baby, it's fine. I know I met that guy a couple times in my 20s. But that's not what she was raised to want. And so I think there's a lot of cognitive dissonance with a lot of women who come from very fundamental backgrounds and are placed in this world where people are making different decisions. And then at the end of the day, also, you just have compatibility. We all know, regardless of how you were raised, regardless of your religious background, whatever, we all know how it feels when you find something that's just right. Whether it's that person, whether it's a career, whether it's a food you really like. Right now, you know what I'm thinking about? The grinder sandwich from TikTok. If you don't know what that is, I'll put it up here on the screen, but that combination of that like dressing and the, like the coleslaw and then you with the, with the, with the peppers and the bread, that's just right to me right now. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's the same way with people. It's the same way with your person. Sometimes we don't meet somebody that has that energy for us. It just doesn't happen. And I think if we normalize that versus normalizing the extremely hateful and misogynistic attitude that was prevalent in, the, in that comment section about Lolo, I think more women would get to the age that I'm at right now or a little bit older like Lolo Jones. And there wouldn't be such shock and surprise and awe. There wouldn't be such, there wouldn't be tears. There wouldn't be, there would be a knowing. Ah, yes, I had a feeling it might go this way because this is a possibility. And it's not being negative. It's not being, you know, I had somebody tell me once, I, I know you're trying to be a realist, but you could be manifesting this. And that made me just want to jump out of a window and roll in glass. I think sometimes the manifesting mindset is so dangerous because people will choose to completely ignore reality and they will convince themselves that literally everything that happens to them is because they did it. And it's just very dangerous because what if something terrible happens to you? You eat that too? You take that in too? Anyway, I, I don't think that way. And I hate when I run into people that do. But yeah, I think if you prepared people for all of the possibilities, good, bad, ugly, single, married, going in alone. I think there would just be a lot less tears. And so um, my heart went out to Lolo when I saw those videos. Uh, if I had the money, I probably would. If I had the money and the, the real support that I needed, I know a couple weeks ago I was like, I have a village, I have it. But then I thought about it and I was like, girl, 
No, you don't. <laughs> you do not have what you really would need to do this by yourself. Um, but if I did, I probably would be in her position, freezing my eggs and seeing what happened. Or actually for me, I would just go it alone. But um, the biggest thing is that I wanna be able to see more conversations about it happening. And I wanna be able to see more honest conversations. And I wish that women my age could open up about their fertility worries, their scares, especially single women um, and married women too. There are uh, There was a documentary that was done by a morning news anchor and I'll put it up here on the screen but um, she was talking about the silent fertility battles her felt her friend battled and they battled them in their 30s and they didn't want to tell anybody because number one, no matter how many times black women struggle with fertility and having babies, there is this belief and it actually stems from slavery because if you could sell a slave as being hyper fertile, what you could do was increase her value on the auction block. And so it's never been true that black women are just producing machines. Never. One person might be very fertile, but another person could struggle. But because of that stereotype we have on our backs of black women being these strong, hyper fertile, what, you know, whatever, a lot of times we're scared to speak up when it's hard. And then especially if we're in Christian communities, because if you tell a Christian person, fundamental Christian person, that you're afraid that your fertility is washing up, you are going to get Abrahamed and Sarahed to death. But don't say that because you know Sarah in the Bible. But you know Sarah in the Bible. Sarah in the Bible. I also know of Methuselah and how he lived to be over 900. We cannot take everything that, the, that was happening then and apply it to now. But the biggest thing I'm going to tell you is please don't say that to a person who is literally struggling, who is on IVF cycle seven, who is running out of money, who is cut it out. But because that is the audience people will run into, they're scared to talk about it. They don't want to say it. It is a silent shame. And it's a silent shame for a lot of women. But I think I'm very, I'm very aware of and very uh, inside of the shame that happens with black women, especially black women who come from conservative Christian backgrounds. Anyway, long story short, I see Lolo, I see all the Lolos. I understand. And I wish that social media was a place where women over 35 could be honest about coming to grips with the truth that there might be a reality where they don't get to be who they were conditioned to be. And I think if I was ever to have had a daughter, I would not have raised her to believe that anything was an absolute because I know that it's not. I would not have raised her to, because I, I, I don't want her to have her heart broken. I want her to be prepared for the opportunities that organically happen in her life. What's gonna happen in one person's life is not automatically gonna happen in another person's life. And most importantly, I would prepare her to be honest about her own desires when it came to certain situations. And so that, that being said, um, I don't have a daughter, but what I do have is a social media platform. And what I would love to see happen is if women over a certain age, if people over a certain age could have honest conversations about the dating realities, the marriage realities, their fertility realities after a certain age and not in a negative way, not in a, well, that's what you get, but in a, hey, we're living in a different social time. We've been hit by several traumatic social events. It's going to affect your potential in some areas and that's okay but you have a right and a and a safe space to speak out about it too you have a safe space to cry about the fact that you know you're a virgin and you're having to go in and freeze your eggs at 40 years old you have a, like this is safe it's unfortunate i'm sorry i want there to be a greater narrative for adulthood and for adult potential past the 18 to 25 or 18 to 24 year old narrative that is so prevalent. I probably won't get that because I mean, I think the the seeds have already been planted, the deep misogyny, the deep shame, it's already been planted. But um, that's one of the reasons why I'm so open about my truth because I know I didn't get here by not settling. I didn't get here by, you know, uh, whatever else crap they wanna say. And I sure didn't get here because I had too much pretty privilege. <laughs> Um, this was the will of God as it pertained to me. And so here I am. And I will not go gentle into that good night. I will not just leave behind. You know, I thought about it the other day and I was like, oh, I could go into menopause 
And I ain't even had a Valentine. And I'm supposed to go in the middle. But you know, there are certain realities that come to light when you're going into, you're letting go of that young womanhood and you're moving into another stage of life. We don't talk about it. Because talking about women's health and talking about women's bodies and mourning things as a woman in a patriarchal and oftentimes misogynistic society is so difficult and so hard and has so many repercussions, a lot of times which are undeserved. So anyway, uh, my point for making this video was to say that um, anyone who attacks women who get to a certain age and realize that they're running out of time to be mothers and uh, attacks them with misogyny and attacks them with a lot of blame without knowing their history, without knowing their story, without intimately knowing the realities of their life. And even if they do, uh, the person is lower than the lowest scum of the earth. And I feel like the only way to truly combat that is for women who are older than 25, who, who missed those timelines, those deadlines, and who still had to keep going and keep making a life for themselves and who, who had to hear from the doctor, hey, this is all we can do. I don't think a baby is in your view. What did you do then? How else did life look outside of the incredibly structured and rigid future we were all told would become us? What happened next? That's what I want to hear about. More stories from older people, more stories from people fighting for their, fighting, still fighting for their dream and doing whatever it takes to have it. Less ageism, less misogyny, less people assuming the worst about human beings who are just trying to find joy. As always, thanks for watching.